Ladies and gentlemen, this is Just Kid Film School. Yay! Where I analyze scenes and uh, we talk about movies and we figure stuff out. That's it. I'm a filmmaker. I know what I'm doing. Almost always. I promise. Has everybody here seen the scene from uh, Rogue One? The, the famous Darth Vader scene. So let's watch the scene because it's such a short scene. And the context of it, for those that don't know, is it's towards the end of the film. This is a actual prequel to the first Star Wars where they get the plans for the Death Star uh, and they've snuck it onto this ship and the most notorious villain of all time, Darth Vader, shows up and he is menacing at an unbelievable level. And I want to talk about how do they pull this off and what do they do uh, that's great versus what they've kind of butchered in a lot of the other movies with this character outside of the original trilogy. So let's watch the scene. All right, first of all, yay. Uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. I get chills. I get almost teary-eyed because it's so good. It's so, so good. And I love, uh, I, I like everybody kind of secretly loves Darth Vader. Um, exactly. We love Darth Vader. We feel like even though he's evil, he's just the embodiment of badassery. It's the way he moves. It's the way he talks. It's just everything about him. All right, so let's break it down. Let's break it. What's interesting about it uh, is it really uses the idea of less is more. And the big mistake for filmmakers uh, after uh, something is established that people like is they think the idea is more is more. And what they do is they overdo it. And we've talked about this before. If you get some element from some movie that people like, like the Predator's eye vision, well, then the next movie will have 700 shots of it. Or their claws that you thought were cool. There'd be 10,000 shots of this and that. And that's how they failed in the new movies, too. It's like instead of, you know, a Death Star, they've got a Super Death Star. Okay, instead of a Super Death Star, they've got, you know, 5,000 Death Star ships that can kill the fucking universe. It's stupid. You don't need it, right? What you need is to really feel fear. It's an emotional reaction as opposed to like an effects-driven sort of on-the-nose reaction. So let's go through it and see how they achieve what I just talked about. Because they do. It's one of the only scenes in one of the newer films outside of the trilogy that I felt this way in. Well, I was like, wow. And they do it in The Mandalorian as well. But they do not do it very much unless you guys have examples. And there are some. There are some good moments in those films. But for the most part, they're just very straightforward. Uh, and I, I, I don't like that. That's why I love this a lot of this film as opposed to the others. Okay. So we're going to go through it silently. I will talk incessantly. Forgive me. Even from the very beginning, there's an anxiety to these guys, right? But even the shot itself here is one of like an over-the-shoulder handheld shot. A little bit of movement to it. So what that makes you feel like is it makes you as the audience feel like I'm right behind him. And so I'm going to pose uh, a theory here uh, for this scene, which I think is really interesting, is that if, if the question is whose scene is this? It's you think, oh, it's Darth Vader's scene, right? Because it's the Darth Vader scene, but it's not. It's the scene of these helpless crew members. 
So this is the difference between this and a lot of the other uh, films is it puts you in the eyes of the character, whereas this puts you in the eyes of the other characters reacting to that character. So that's why the shot selection, this kind of thing is important. When you see the little moments of over the shoulder says, I'm one of the crew members if from the very beginning, you know, so, and the essential detail, you know, they all run. And I think this shot coming up after this, so it's a long hallway, it may be a dolly zoom. And a dolly zoom, and I'm not 100% sure, but a dolly zoom uh, is one of those things where the camera is zooming in while, while they're dollying the opposite direction or the reverse of that. And it makes hallways look longer. It's in a lot of horror films. I think that's it. I think they're doing it here because it's, it's as he's running, if... It feels like the hallway is getting longer. So what it says is to you as a character is that that guy, it, it, the hallway feels endless to him in that one shot. The acting here is really good. They selected a lot of like really good actors because all these little micro things, like you look at guy here, right? This guy, right? Then you look at guy here, right? And I want you to study the reaction of these two guys. What you're seeing is high level acting out of guys who are on screen for a quarter second. And this is where details matter. And this is why you don't have stupid green screens of characters going flippity do because it doesn't work. It's stupid, right? Whereas this, even in its small details, it's successful. And those details add up. So you see these guys, study these two guys here. And who are they waving on? They're not waving on Darth Vader right? They're waving on you. You're the third crew member or 10th crew member of this. That's why you were over the guy's shoulder and they're waving you. They're telling you, let's go. So the struggle to get out and now you've, you've shown that they're trapped and you've shown it by not really showing his face in here. It's a feeling. It's all about feeling. Whoever's outside here has no way to really get them out yet. Now, all these guys, these really fine actors here, they went from this big sort of like body language of move, 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 get out and, you know, help, help, help. And like I said, we'll talk about the sound a little bit, but they've all calmed, but it's a weird calm. It's like, what is that going on? We've noticed something. And now the anxiety and it's, it's quiet. And these guys are really like, they're sweating, they're nervous, but they're quiet. And this is the first time in this scene, they're quiet. And I'm not just talking about quiet no, sound wise. I'm talking about the, the quietness that goes with tension. It just create. it went from like hyper aggressive movement tension to just calm, still tension. This filmmaker is very smart. And you notice, like I told you about the shot selection before, chaotic, big movement, right? Camera moving like this. Now look at the shot. Very slow, very slow. And then you'll hear it later, the breathing. And ah. It's amazing. It's, it's fucking amazing because it's this darkness. And from the darkness, only lit by his deadly weapon, is this uh, uh, mastermind villain. It's revealed. It's not like giant light, you know, close up on him. It's just this is all their perspective. And there's a little bit. They put a little fog right behind him. So they're still bouncing off the fog. Same thing, slow push in and you guys panic, right? And then it's it's like somebody goes, sets it off and the anxiety picks up. Like Vader shots at this point, right? Vader shot, it's very slow. It's, it's even in the shooting style. Now the shots that on the other side are not slow. They're They're a little chaotic. They've got motion to them. And now this is the most important shot of the entire scene to me. It's this guy, this really good, he's a really good actor in this moment. He's saying, and I, I said, we'll put this down a little bit. He's saying, help us. And I believe it. So whenever you have a scene like this and you have a character that that's this awesome, there's two ways to do it. The stupid way and the way they did it. <laughs> and the stupid way is just show the character he's ass kicking, lots of effects. He's Darth Vader. You love him. That's stupid. This way is you fear Darth Vader because the characters are telling you to fear him. That man's anxiety, that man's fear makes me fear Vader through his eyes. He says, help us. And Vader's still coming. And less is more. Less is more, less is more, less is more. You don't see him. You see he's there. He's gone. He's, he's obscured by all these things. 
And uh, many times he's in darkness because it, what's more scary than something that you can kind of see? And now he picks him up, right? Now for the first time, we're kind of not really 100% invader's perspective, but it is from behind him. But it's not full body. You see him. You see the guys in the background. It's always just like it's his hand. And because it's his hand, it shows you the power that he has in just his hand alone. And I know if you know the character, you know what he can do. But the, you feel like when you're watching, this is the first time I've ever seen this character do anything. And there's a big thump that you heard later. So now you've got this shot here connects to this one, obviously. He says, pull it. It's basically a mini scene within a scene between these two characters. As one is trying to escape for his dear life and the other one. So they, they actually give you a little moment, the humanity moment, so they can rip you right back into this death machine. And that's the most Vadery moment you get in this whole thing. Because he is just... Remember, I told you before, everything else is chaos, but his shot is usually just smooth as shit. But I, this is the kind of stuff I love right here. So remember, it's chaos, but I love this. Because, right, uh, uh, Jerry from my chat room said, it's like death walking slowly. 100% accurate. I could not have said it better myself. He is the Grim Reaper. He's the Grim Reaper. This is how you would treat the Grim Reaper. That's very smart, Jerry. Because the Grim Reaper wouldn't be like, he'd be a shadow. He wouldn't be on top of you and hold his lightsaber. Kind of like Empire in a way. Like in Empire, in the end of Empire, the way he appears and he's in the shadow and he steps down the stairs to face Luke. And he's always like, like coming in and out of light. It's really cool. But I love this shot because... It's more scary because he's out of focus and he's in the, the clouds. The terror is coming. It's almost like one of those movies where like you see your whole city getting wiped out in the background and you're running for your dear life. And the focus is on you and your terror because it's a lot more impactful. I just love that. And you know what's interesting too? Uh, noticing here, uh, like you said, the other thing about him is it's all about control, right? So we're going to back up a little bit. So when he first grabs the guy, it and the camera moves with the force. So like as the guy flies up, the camera does the shot upwards. So like when he does it again, right? Here, same thing. Camera goes up cuz Vader controls everything. And and it the, the the way the camera moves reinforces that control. He's like this guy's willing to give up his life. There's a nice little subtle cut in here. See, you have this close up that maintains the scene between these two guys that we've already established their relationship in a small amount of time. But then it cuts to the longer shot and he looks back and what's, you see what's interesting here is remember less is more, less is more the lightsaber, right? His face is being lit by it. He turns back. Now you're in Vader's point of view for the first time. And then you go back, take it, but it's very subtle, right? It's a very quick shot. And it tells you, holy shit, death is nearly upon me. And in this moment, I'm giving up my whole life to save these Death Star plans. And which have such a significance in the next movies. And that's why this scene is so impactful. So instead of seeing, I love this. Instead of seeing the guy get slaughtered from Vader. Vader, could you could show the front of Vader. He could pick up his lightsaber and be like twirl around and loop-de-doo, right? You don't need none of that shit. They tell you how to feel about Vader through their expression. But now, how you feel about what Vader can do is told to you through a door. It's the fact that he can slice through this door. It's implied. It makes you do a little mental homework for a second, but that's incredible. And in addition to that, the blade threatens the guy who was in that moment with him right here. That's how powerful this man is, is that his ability to hurt this, this guy is actually a threat to the guys beyond him. His power is, is almost extended. It's very interesting. And door opens. So they're just like, yo, we're out of here. Same thing, a little chaos, right? And this, remember I mentioned before, the more obscure he is, the more you're in the character's eyes. You feel fear through them because when something chaotic is happening, like if there were shootings in the street or this and that, what's scary about it is not necessarily the threat. It's the fact that you don't know what's happening. And that's what this achieves. And that's what uh, also Rogue One achieved a little bit in the earlier scene 
where they they have the town and they have the uh, terrorists, the rebels, whatever, chat attack the the empire ship. Like it's really interesting because there's a little bit of chaos in that scene. Totally different scene has a great value too. But here I love this shot because look at Vader. Just a glimpse, right? In focus, in focus. Door closes, and he tells you how to feel about it. It's so good, so good. It's obscured, but it's you see it. But you're like, oh my god, it's still coming. It's almost like watching like a, a train coming at you, or or tsunami in the distance. And even though this guy got away, like Vader, if you don't get that door closed, you're screwed. He'll kill the whole ship, and that's the feeling you get. And now he's like, launch, right? And the only way you're going to get away from this guy is to just get on another spaceship and fly away. And that was the first real full body shot we've got of this man in the entire movie. Not the entire movie, but the, the whole scene. And now you're in Vader's perspective for the first time. Now you go into Vader. Now you're in Vader's perspective. And you get a shot that previews the entire uh, first trilogy. Right right there. And that's the most clear you see him in the whole scene. Uh, let's watch it again. Now we'll talk about sound. In three, two, one. Okay. Let's go! All right. Now from a musical perspective, it's the end of a triumph. Right? Bam, 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 bam. And listen for the, the change. It's almost like, can we get out? That's kind of what it sounds like to me, you know? We've got it now. now. But there's a hint of something in there. But there's still sounds of explosions. There's still threats, right? Now listen for it. So when he's like, hey, hey, help. Now I realize something new in this scene. They're not paying attention. They haven't noticed that these guys are trapped. This scene, we've seen it in other films. We've seen submarine movies where the water is closing or they got to get the door closed. We've seen movies where there's radioactivity. They got to get the door closed and they can't. The guy's trapped. But this is interesting because these guys in the distance, notice they're all running away. So he's like, help me. You guys have forgotten us and we've got the plans. Okay, so that's problem A. We're left. We're trapped and we're left here. And there's explosions, but there's no current threat yet. All of a sudden, music goes boom. And all you're left with is... Ear, ear, ear. And there's something about it that is unnerving. You hear metal. Something is being twisted. Metal is being twisted and it makes them nervous. And in fact, what else has changed? Yeah, the yes of breath, but what else has changed? Listen, listen for the explosions. Go. We gotta go now. You hear like shh. explosions. So the ship is under fire in some capacity, right? But when you get to here, you don't really hear the alarm. You hear it a little bit there. And now you know, there's no more explosions. Why did all the fire stop? They're confused. You just hear twisting metal. Now the breath. Now, does, do any of these characters know who Darth Vader is at this point? Maybe. Uh, I'd assume no, but that's my assumption. Maybe they've heard of him. And this sound is deafening. <laughs> They are scared, obviously. What is this guy with a sword doing here? And watch his face. He tells us what the scene is about here. Open fire! Open fire. So, okay, you know, we're, we're going to defend ourselves. We're going to beat this guy. <laughs> now is the operatic, apocalyptic, beautiful, grand uh, music comes in. Uh, Jerry said they heard uh, rumors of Darth Vader, probably, but never face to face. It's a good assumption. Okay, well, we're going to try to kill him. And he's like, it, it, with, the, with the opera, 
plus the way he moves, it's like watching a, a ballet, you know, but a destructive one. And now this, the, the sounds of the screams and the... Yeah, and Jerry says they don't realize that he can deflect laser fire. So there's a lot of realizations. Um, it's first they're trapped, right? Uh, then they're scared. Well, then they're brave, and then they become helpless. Very quickly. But they're not there. They're going to fight him. But even their body language of how they're moving is like one of like anxiety and not confidence. They don't look like confidently fighting him. They look like guys who are going to get slaughtered. Now, see how important that help us is because no one has come to let them out yet. And right after the help us, you keep establishing the threat. The threat, the threat, the threat. What's the threat? Now you go to the close-up. And that's why sometimes I see this thing differently when I play with the sound for you guys. So you go to the close-up. This is the first time, I believe, I'm going to back up. That's the first time you saw a close-up of him doing that. And that's why it's so much more impactful because the sound is, is much more in your face and he's in your face. Because in, the, in your brain, if you were seeing something coming at you, you'd hyper-focus on it and it would get really big in your mind. It would not nearly be as scary if they kept it only in this shot. So right have to help us with a close-up. And these are all choices that the filmmakers make and the editors make. They're really smart. And there's a nice cut on action. And you get the, the nice light explosion behind it. You're right. And now he can pick you up with his mind. Oh, my God. And what's awesome about this scene, right? And this is super important, is that we all know. We know who Darth Vader. Anybody that saw Rogue One, 99.9% .9 of people have seen some Star Wars movie. And almost all have seen, like, seen the original. It's just, it, it's kind of like predetermined, right? And for them to be able to make you fear him in a way that's new is incredible because you're experiencing through the eyes of the guys who are getting slaughtered. And we've never seen, and also as filmmakers, as, as film goers, we've never seen Vader do this to a group of people. We've imagined it, right? We've always thought, oh, he'd be a badass. And so it builds a level of helplessness and a threat because something new keeps popping up. Yes, I, I agree with that completely. It's like, oh my God, he's slamming guys off the fucking wall. This is incredible. So now the guys on the outside have come to look. It might have been interesting if you, if they had a shot, they didn't use this, and I don't even know if they had the shot, of this guy running to the door to see what was happening. That would have been really interesting. Like he saw, or he turns, he looks, he sees like all this light in there, he runs over and it's like chaos. But it still works extremely well. Didn't need it. And remember, this is control again. So this, because you want to play off the emotion of chaos, so we get to help us, and you get this really close-up menacing. Why this shot's so important here is it makes you feel like it's right on top of the guy who's like, help us, even though he's still far away in the hallway. But this shot is very, like, moves all over the place, follows some of the action, but it doesn't, what I really like about the long shot, which I'm about to show you the next time, is this, is that Vader, like we said it before, he is in absolute control. There's nothing scared about him. He's not worried, right? It's like he's fighting little kids. And that's what this this power, uh, this sort of even the grip of his hand, the way he's standing. It's like, oh, we can hold on to a laser and shoot it back to you. Now you have no weapons at all. So they're just going to get slaughter. Uh, Baloney says, I love how it shows Darth Vader redirect the blaster shoot back at them using only the force. Reminds me of the scene of Kylo Ren when he stopped the blaster shot. Yes. And there are scenes in the new movies that are good. Don't get me wrong. And there are a lot of scenes with Adam Driver and Daisy Ridley that are quite good. But nothing is as good as this. And this is why the direction, the choices in this film in particular, in my opinion, are much stronger consistently throughout the film. It wasn't like small moments, like the level of detail and design. And that's why, in my opinion, that this movie stands out. Because they knew to do less is more. You know, whereas Kylo, they would have moments like that and then they'd have him thrashing with a lightsaber, and it was too much. We didn't need to see 42 versions of the lightsaber. Force Awakens did it pretty well, but then it just kind of devolved from there. It was just more stuff. And even if they were elegant in it, everything else was just like a shit pile of effects and over-the-top, you know, one-upmanship of itself and long exposition that it ruined any of these moments. It ruined it. 
Uh, Jerry says, also, it's the fallacy of Vader because he's like a cat playing with his food, a rat, uh, as Vader could uh, use the Force to take the plans and then kill everyone. I don't know if he could. I don't know here that Vader could just, you know, take the plans. Uh, I don't think he knows where they are. I think he's in the fight and he just... He, he, but he, I do agree with the cat playing with the, with the mouse here. I think he is that much in control of these guys. He's the Terminator here. He's just very... And this is very similar to the way that some of the original Terminator was shot in the factory at the end. If that sort of less is more, you see it, and then it just walks past the camera, and it, you see its head looking. Very interesting. But I don't know. I feel like he's just... He doesn't know, but he's going to go through every single person on this crew to get those plans. In my opinion. <laughs> So now you're starting to see those little shots, you know? And I love this guy. It's like, dang it. He's so good. And this is what happens when you get good actors to play small roles. They add up. Because if that guy's like, take it, it's boring. It doesn't work. But the fact that he's convincing makes me that much more uh, afraid when he dies here in the way of which he dies. Because that's, he's saying take it. And he's basically resigned himself to his death and did his one last heroic thing. But it's not over. You know what I'm saying? Now, these guys have gotten a sense of what Vader can do. They're all resigned. I can't, we cannot win this fight. And this guy, he looks back in this one moment and almost like he's looking back. And he knows they're all dead. Right here, he makes the decision. It's interesting because the door kind of the door kind of closes first before he hits the button. So I'm not sure how to feel about that. But maybe he's communicating or who knows. <laughs> or closing another door or who knows. It doesn't even matter at this point. So then you go from all these inside shots, chaos, 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 chaos. And then very static shot, thing coming down. Chip release, nice tracking shot. And it's become more elegant again. Because the threat, it's over. It's already ended. They've already basically gotten away. All the shots have changed. All the structure has changed. The music comes back. It's his sort of theme. Empire theme, right? And they change it up. At the end, it's... It's to be continued on a traditionally menacing, menacing theme. I love this scene so much. So this was the scene from uh, Rogue One, and it shows why so many people love this film over all those other catastrophes that they put out there. <laughs> no offense if you worked on them. I'm sorry. I apologize. Is it the best Star Wars film? No. Were there some really parts that were boring uh, that I felt were kind of like fluffy? Uh, sure. Uh, but there were scenes in it that were just quite good and really just fit within the universe uh, because they made creative choices uh, just like this. Uh, we have a quick thing from Java. Java said, it's like the fear built up to the point the ship like it, like it was running scared too. It's interesting. So what's cool about what you said, um, it, it, it's allowing your brain too to start seeing these little moments, which makes me happy and seeing them and interpreting them. And that's really what this is. You know, I'm a filmmaker for 25 plus years, whatever. Uh, but I can, I can see every edit. I can hear all the sound design changes. But really, it's, it, it's, I'm still interpreting them. And I'm saying... How does that shot make me feel? Uh, and, and the fact that you were able to interpret it as running scared. That's a really important distinction. And as, as a person who tells stories, that's what you want to do. You want to be able to look at a shot, look at a scene, look at an interaction and define it. And say, that makes me feel like they're running scared. This makes me nervous. This feels like control. This is whose point of view it is right now. This is, the, this is some uh, expository, I think that's the right word, piece of information. We need to show you the plans. And then we need to focus on the characters. And these are all choices. And when they make bad choices, you know, you just get a mess. You just get visual eye candy that anyone could do. But you're getting a real director's take on Star Wars here. And that's what makes it work. It's a, there's decisions in here for emotions that they're creating. They're, they're not random. All of these shots are selected for a reason. And all of the shots that the editors put together were for a reason. I may not guess all the right reasons, but they're for a reason. And every single sound design choice on top of that is a reason. And then the director looks at them all and says, that's the Vader I wanted to see.
you know? It's really cool. I love this so much. This is Just Kid Film School. Yay! Where I analyze scenes and uh, we talk about movies and we figure stuff out. That's it. I'm a filmmaker. I know what I'm doing. Almost always. I promise.